Hi Virgo, welcome to Sugar Free. This is your Q4 reading for 2023. Let's see what's coming up in the last three months of uh, this year. That's just flown by like, uh, like it never happened. It's unbelievable. It's a, it's a week to the flipping autumn equinox. Can you believe that? I hope you've had a good summer wherever you are because the summer's been pretty rubbish here. I mean, we've had a, like about five days of hot weather <laughs> last week and everyone's like, or during the week, everyone's like, oh, heat wave, heat wave. But yeah, we've had loads of rain and fog <laughs> and just like cloudy and cool. Anyway, you don't come here to talk about the weather talking about the energetic weather. So let's move these up here. Right, I'm using two decks here, Virgo. I've got the minor arcana of the Rider Waite here split into its suits, like all shuffled. And here I've got the ancient Italian tarot. Absolutely lovely, I've been working with this deck for a long time. So I'm gonna pull three of these and um, build the reading off of that. And I will clarify each of the major arcana with one from each suit of the uh, minor arcana Ooh, to uh, drill down into the energy a little bit. So, right, I'm just going to give it one more shuffle, Virgo. Oops, okay. Well, that's you, isn't it? Or is that Taurus? I can never remember. It's one of the earth signs. I think it's, oh no, you're the hermit, aren't you, Virgo? Okay, we've got the High Priestess, the Hierophant, the Pope, Il Papa. Okay. He clearly wanted to come and talk to us. Okay, so he's going to go in position one. Here's card number two, the Emperor in reverse. <laughs> and card number three, the Hanged Man in reverse. <laughs> all right listen what i'm getting off of this is that no matter how uh how much someone could be you could be somebody else could be a whole collective don't know no matter how much the rights and wrongs of something and the not the legal rights and wrongs but the moral rights and wrongs the spiritual rights and wrongs the the kind of what he's done and not done okay that's what this is about the hierophant this is like the the kind of the politicization, the reification of authority in matters moral and spiritual. And no matter how <laughs> how much attention one pays, and look, they're paying attention. Except for him, look, he's looking the other way, you see. He's looking over here. I well, know it's the other way in the reading, but no matter how much one goes on about this and sort of prates and preaches, this preaching, this is preaching energy. Truth of the matter is, no one's in charge of anything, really. <laughs> We're all making it up as we go along. I mean, there are certain sort of parameters that, that are there for a while, maybe, in our lives, and then they're not. I mean, there's nothing permanent. That's what I'm getting off this today. And uh, the fact of the matter is, is that things like come tumbling out of trees. And everything's just just keeps moving. There's there's kind of yeah, there's this kind of tumbling energy about this for me today, the hanged man in reverse. Um, you know, the hanged man is when we kind of take ourselves out of the game for a little while and go and sit on the bench and like have a satsuma and a word with ourselves. But it's in the reverse. So there's a kind of Okay, in this three card spread, column one represents things as you see them, or the first card that comes out represents things as you see them. Column two represents the hidden energy, and column three represents the bigger picture. Okay, that's how this three card spread works. And I'm picking up a sort of, I would say a sort of paternalistic, um, moral, not panic, because that's a phrase, isn't it? Moral panic, but a kind of the energy of, of the, the kind of the rules of the game of being human needing to be explained again 
either to you or to somebody else as this kind of this this bringing to bear of like the moral and spiritual rule book on things and I kind of want to say that there's a feeling of anxiety coming off it but I don't think there is because I mean when I pulled this one and this one um yeah I was just laughing and it does it makes me laugh somehow and the reason I, I'm sort of making something of that is because I'm, I'm doing a series of readings here uh, today and they've all been really quiet until I've reached your one, Virgo, and the energy's just made me like bubble, bubble. The, my laughter came tumbling out. <laughs> okay, there's a kind of get over yourself energy here, really. You know, no one's making anything, no, no one's got like a rule book. There isn't a flipping rule book for life. There isn't. And perhaps that's what this reading is about, is about embracing that. Let's, uh, let's pull some clarifiers, see what we can find out. Okay. Mm. This emperor in reverse here, this kind of um, king on his head, <laughs> Uh, it's something to do with this sort of anarchic sort of energy. It's so different. It's so diametrically opposed to the Hierophant energy. And we've got another religious scene here, you see? We've got this deal going on between these three, like, entities here. The worker, the financier, and the commissioner. And in order for this to work, this setup here, all three of them have to be there and play their part. But at the same time, so there's like a collective responsibility here for making the energy flow. And uh, each one flowing in their own way, the merchant, the monk and the mason. But they've all got to be there to like get the party started, to make the thing happen, because he's not going to work for free bottom line so there's this is about collaboration like willing collaboration of equals and making something work in a collective way this is also a collective energy the hierophant you know this is not the hermit this is not the private contemplation in in the hut or the cave this is the the public expression of this stuff so this is happening out in the world, but I'm getting a really kind of mischievous energy of this. This is like a kind of naughty child sort of energy, but like charming naughty child. There's something about letting go here, Virgo. There's something about letting go because, okay, I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> because, da -da -da -da. well, maybe because of that, Ten of Wands. Maybe, um, maybe this is just like wearing thin, matey sermons. <laughs> They're wearing thin. Perhaps this is about going your own way with something, something to do with work and sort of upending. So, yeah, I mean, this card, the hanged man, I always get confused when it's the hanged man in reverse because it looks like he's standing up and that kind of looks like he's the right way up because the hangman is upside down anyway I can't remember what I was going to say now <laughs> there is this sort of letting go yeah this this rope thing here that's holding him up just like snapping after a while and, and put on down he comes but it's not a kind of a precipitous drop you know, it's not like he's been pushed off a flipping cliff. You know, he's just going, you can see basically where the ground is. You ain't got that far to fall. You know, like the odd bruise or something. And it's fueled by this. This is like the hidden energy here, the emperor in the reverse. And there is something for me. Um, I'm sort of delighted by the, the, the sort of impishness of this in this reading. That's how it's coming across to me today. Right, let's continue here. Yeah, perhaps it's just, it's just like all work and no play, maybe. And this sort of like, 
I was going to say Quaker, but the Quakers are all right. But there was like a hardcore Puritan Methodists. You know what I mean? It's like, you must work. Work is your salvation. How funny that that became the national religion in, in England pretty much at the time of the Industrial Revolution. <laughs> where people were getting hauled out of their villages and the common land was being enclosed and privatised. Nothing new. The whole of England's like all like chived up into like owned bits. And it was done deliberately through acts of parliament, driving the peasants off the land and into the cities to work in the mills. And the religion was all suddenly about like the virtue of, of work. Work would sort of save you. All work and no play. Let go. Like hack, hack, hack at that. And like, oh, I don't know. You know, let your hair down. Like he is. <laughs> he looks like Johnny Rotten, doesn't he? <laughs> he really does, actually. Page of Swords. And the Eight of Cups. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what I'm getting off this? I'm getting this, this is to do with a sort of ill-advised communication leading to like a parting of the ways, leading to the leaving behind of something. Perhaps that's what you're really worried about. Because <laughs> you can bet your bottom dollar this dude chooses his words carefully. Perhaps there's some sort of ill-advised, like you're worried about that maybe, or... Oh, I don't know. But whatever it is, it, I mean, it could be a chance comment and something changes like on the emotional front. Something changes. Um, yeah, something gets left behind. Okay. Ready ho Let's keep going. Emperor in reverse. Oh, five of pentacles. Okay. King of Wands, Knight of Swords, and the Two of Cups. This is a really, so, sorry for going so quiet now. I'm just trying to, Do you know what? I, th I think you've been deliberately keeping this like more playful energy, perhaps, Virgo. So you've been you've been keeping yourself cut off from it. And it does suddenly strike me just in the context of how this reading looks, the way I've got the cards laid out. We've got the three of pentacles here and we've got three of the five pentacles there. And somehow the way that you've been um, running this kind of collaborative project or operation here is leaving you like cut off from something out, out in the cold. That's what the Five of Pentacles is, the out in the cold card. But it's never really very clear like why they don't go in. You know, maybe there's too much kind of idea that the church will always give uh, succor and comfort and charity. But they clearly, you know, they're not getting it anywhere. There's a cut offness here. And you're walking along and, you know, you can see like warmth through the window, but you are. As Jude the Obscure says in the Thomas Hardy novel, I am an outsider to the end of my days. You're keeping yourself outside of this, as I say, more playful energy. And it's to do with how you are, how you are operating in the world um, in terms of the value that you bring to the world and in exchange for money. OK, that's what the Three of Pentacles is about. Um Something about the way you're uh, operating in, in that sphere um, is blocking you from being more kind of relaxed and released here. Right, King of Wands. Okay, do you know what I see here? 
in the King of Wands in relation to the Ten of Wands over here is that this king actually just reaches forward and takes one of these. He's like, right, I'm, I'm having that one because you, you're on the verge of dropping them all. So I'm going to take hold of this one and keep hold of it. And you know I'm the king and obviously there's nothing you can do about them. They're probably not yours anyway. You're just like ferrying them for somebody else and you're managing quite well but something needs to be taken back and kind of grasped and got hold of and enacted, acted upon. Action is, is on the table, whether it's required or advised or whatever, I don't know, but there's certainly the energy for it. Certainly the energy for it. And it's a more kind of steady eddy energy, the King of Wands, and certainly than the Emperor in reverse. I mean, my God, you know, there's little more um, kind of uh, striking, <laughs> so to speak, than a mad king. Anyway, so yeah, the, 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 the wish to kind of get hold of this situation or perhaps the need to get hold of it or the possibility existing for getting hold of it. And God, the, like the the fluctuations of energy in this column, it's like this. Uh, there is something slightly anarchic about the energy here, but it's beautiful as well. It's absolutely beautiful because we have swift, swift acts of thought and word here. We have this taking control in the realm of deeds, of actions. And here we've got real kind of lightning fast clarity of thought and speech here. And uh, <laughs> in, in this kind of, yeah, this impish anarchic kind of upending of things, in the emperor in the reverse there uh, there's real space there's something really joyous about it and i'm getting that off the two of cups and remembering how the initial pull just made me laugh there's something really really lovely in this um i think in a way like the worst if i may card on the table here so far is the five of pentacles because there's something really, um, really, oh, I don't know, you know, because people say this is a sort of poverty consciousness card. And I think even the concept of poverty consciousness is um, it, it's a concept born of a world that isn't having like economic problems <laughs> and hasn't got like living rampant inflation. Because, you know, poverty isn't just consciousness. Sometimes poverty is real. But in terms of poverty consciousness, you know, if you believe you don't deserve to go into that church, you won't go in. It doesn't matter how cold you are because it will feel wrong. It will feel wrong. And, and... Hmm. Do you know what I'm getting off this now? There's two of cups. I'm just getting forgiveness. There's forgiveness here. And there's absolute kind of mutual forgiveness. Okay. I'm going to put on this hangman in reverse now, this kind of tumbly energy. Well, there's a safe landing. <laughs> okay. You know, she's holding that pentacle. What tumbles out of the tree when the hangman is in the reverse? is safely held and um and really cherished and it's confirming for me this card at least is confirming for me the very positive energy around the emperor in the reverse and the hanged man in the reverse and this kind of weariness and just being a bit fatigued by the sermons here and there's fatigue here as well. And there's kind of keeping oneself cut off from warmth. 
here is and then there's this beautiful like playful the word tumbling keeps coming but tumbling isn't like falling tumbling is is when something light is just kind of moving it's not too fast there's nothing precipitous about it it's just it's light and it's held it's, oh god it's, it's it's beautiful it's really really lovely well how interesting look I said that the King of Wands took back one of these ones in the Ten of Wands, and here we have the Nine. <laughs> I've got to tell you, Virgo, I've never had this. What I'm going to say now of the Nine of uh, the Nine of Wands, but there's something utterly charming about this dude for me today. He's really, he's doing a really bloody good job. And um, he's one of those sort of one-off people who just is who he is. And he's guarding that. He's keeping that. He's holding that one wand. And he's like, yep, yep, yep. Well, I've been through a few things. Yeah, I've been through. But, you know, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. No, I'm just standing there. You're good. You're good. Like, you see, there's something really nice and sort of reliable and steady about him today and as I say charming and I've never seen that in uh in this card before this this is the king of wands kind of neurodivergent cousin <laughs> that's what it is oh dear I'm not I'm not laughing at anybody but um I hope I haven't offended anybody by saying that but this is two sides of the same coin, you see. You've got this single wand held here by this king who's like retaking one of those and saying, no, I'll look after that. Thank you. And then you've got, you've got this one here, which is what this one becomes when he has acted, when the king of wands has acted. This one gets to put them all down and just hold one. And miraculously, the other eight stand up on their own. Uh, it's... It, there's something, there's a lovely story emerging here. And I'm just really attached to this dude today. And I've never felt that about him before. Sorry about the motorbike there. Let's keep going. It's, it's as assertive in a way. I mean, I know it doesn't look assertive, this Nine of Wands. You know, it looks all sort of like defensive and like he's scared and all that. he's injured and everything. But he's flipping there, mate. He's... He's doing a good job. They're all standing up. Okay. Five of swords. Oh. And the three of cups. Okay. What I'm getting off the five of swords here is that any kind of concerns about, like, relaxing things a bit here and kind of embracing this uh, emperor in reverse energy and kind of unlocking unbolting the doors on yourself taking back control as the phrase goes and like in a really effective way with kind of like swift results and really beautiful results like opening up to this a bit and allowing this to move through you, you know any kind of conflict that might come from that um it's just lightweight stuff it's not going to lead to anything it's just someone like sounding off basically and just because they like sounding off and you know you're kind of perhaps more bubbly uh, or kind of open presence here and willingness to not always have to check with the rule book <laughs> about what's the right thing to do and just like more relaxed somebody might just like jump on and sort of say oh you know what you're doing you? or whatever but it's just lightweight shit all right it's a five of swords it's nothing serious you know it's just someone that's just what he does this bloke yeah and they know that and that's part of why they're traumatized and crying because they know this whatever is going to turn up the next morning and go around grabbing all the swords going going, look how many people I killed when they actually did all the work. 
okay so it's just lightweight any kind of um kind of attempts to sort of be cutting towards you it's just what they do and you know they just look for opportunities to do it it's not personal that's what i'm getting off that five of swords it's not personal um and you know we move from the two of cups to the three of cups with this kind of more open energy here in the emperor in the reverse and the, um, the hanged man in the reverse and and the way that that energy of opening and sharing more basically sharing sharing the way it is so safely held here by the queen of pentacles and um There's a kind of quirky idiosyncrasy, syncrasity or whatever about this dude today. In and he knows why he's holding um, that wand. And he knows why in the same way this king of wands knows why he chose that one. It's this thing about choice and about committing to something. And being prepared to um, not take any kind of like pushback too seriously or personally. And uh, a beautiful opening up into sort of celebrations amongst the equals. And I mean, this hierophant, you know, this there's a role for this in life and in our societies. There's a role for this. But it can, because it's reified and um, it's a hierarchy, hierophant, okay? It's a hierarchy. So it's about different values being assigned to certain things in a kind of order of uh, magnitude. But there's nothing order of magnitude going on here or here, really, because the cups have been like eschewed here in the Eight of Cups something's been left behind and perhaps that the sort of movement from this reified hierarchical kind of energy here into this more open um energy for want of a better word here is really the key to unlocking this this kind of real democracy of um of joy and connection and um love and respect here seen in the two of cups and the three of cups absolutely beautiful energy so there's a lot, you know, there are wins here, but it might feel a bit, um, how can I say, it might feel a little bit uh, scary, all right? But I think once this great big, like, armfuls of stuff here has been pared down here, whether it is through a kind of defensiveness or simply by the choice to pare this down, and and make uh you know pull one out of the ten it doesn't matter which one it is the important thing is is that holding one one way forward and um going in a new direction moving out of this rather pious stuffy sort of energy here um through the very kind of tumultuous and ebbing and flowing energy here in this of, of the hidden column to this beautiful destination here everything's in hand queen of pentacles has got it all right and i mean you know if you put the hierophant and the queen of pentacles together you know there would probably wouldn't be much conversation because she's not impressed by this all right because she knows what's important and she's got it safe right i'm gonna leave that there virgo thank you so much for watching uh no one moment I'm going to pull an oracle card because that's a I want there's another kind of little slice of perspective I want to get so I, I don't know what but I just feel there's another slice of perspective to be uh, explored here so what I've got here is um, the wild unknown archetypes deck by Kim Krantz so let's pull one of these How interesting. We get the sword. Oof. 
So, yeah, there's going to be a kind of, there's going to be a point of um, departure. Departure here. Eight of Cups. There's going to be a point of departure from this energy via engagement with this towards this. And it's possibly in retrospect. And the reason I'm saying that, and I just see I've got two on the table, so I'll take the other one as well. These are eggs. Well, they look like eggs. They look like frying eggs, whatever. Um, this is about perspective, about two sort of sharply divided, sharply with the sword, divided perspectives. And um, it's echoing for me the eclipse here in the uh, in the Eight of Cups, which has suddenly taken on more uh, significance for me there. You see, a sharp sword won't leave much of a visible mark. It might be hard to spot this kind of fulcrum. There's a fulcrum point here. And it, I, I'm not getting any kind of like, like, oh God, you know, this could be like really dodgy if you miss it type thing. I'm not getting that off it. But what I am getting off it is that it's something that you might not see until afterwards. And it might already have happened. Like some, perhaps on the subconscious, and I'm seeing the two sides here as well. It's a bit like a kind of cosmic fried eggy, like yin and yang thing going on, isn't it? It's definitely like two separate sides. Something maybe has already shifted in your subconscious that is yet to show itself. And perhaps that's what this process is. Something's, um, yeah, something shifted. And that shift is to do with this King of Wands, like extracting one from that 10 and holding it, you know, with such certainty. I mean, this dude here in the Nine of Wands doesn't have so much certainty, but, you know, he's certainly flipping holding on to it. Yeah, he's not being casual about it. And there's nothing casual about this energy either. So, yeah, subconscious energy bubbling to the surface. Now, I, this is the second time I've pulled this card. And this is a new deck for me. And I mean, look how many there are. There's just like shed loads of them, all right? The Pilgrim. There's a higher purpose here. And funnily enough, saying that brings me straight back to the Hierophant. Perhaps what's happening here is a repurposing of um, a sort of internal moral code and a movement towards some sort of higher um, sort of aspiration. There's aspirational energy about this and purposeful like movement, purposeful, forward motion, which is what we see here in the King of uh, in the King of Wands. Every journey starts with a step. This is the step. This is the journey. And I mean, I'm not sure why I singled out these two: the Hierophant and the Queen of Pentacles. But I think perhaps the real um, the real kind of destination of this pilgrimage is a shifting in perspective uh, on the uh, spiritual and perhaps moral front and the nurturing of a new, more kind of open way of approaching things. That's what I'm getting off this. Um, <clears throat> as I say, this is the step. And you might not even realise you've taken it, okay? But there's something bubbling up from the subconscious that is calling you to, um, to go on this journey. Oh, well, there we go. That's what I got for you, Virgo. So thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful Q4 and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. I mean, you can come back before the end of the Q4 if you want.
<laughs> See you later. Bye.